2001, A Space Odyssey is a 1968 science fiction novel by British writer Arthur C. Clarke. It was developed concurrently with Stanley Kubrick's film version and published after the release of the film. Clarke and Kubrick worked on the book together, but eventually only Clarke ended up as the official author. The story is based in part on various short stories by Clarke, including The Sentinel, written in 1948 for a BBC competition, but first published in 1951 under the title Sentinel of Eternity. By 1992, the novel had sold three million copies worldwide. An elaboration of Clark and Kubrick's collaborative work on this project was made in The Lost Worlds of 2001. The first part of the novel, in which aliens influence the primitive ancestors of humans, is similar to the plot of an earlier Clark story, Encounter in the Dawn. Topic. Plot summary An ancient and unseen alien race uses a device with the appearance of a large crystalline monolith to investigate worlds across the galaxy and, if possible, to encourage the development of intelligent life. The book shows one such monolith appearing in ancient Africa, 3 million years BC in the movie, 4 million years, where it inspires a starving group of hominids to develop tools. The ape men use their tools to kill animals and eat meat, ending their starvation. They then use the tools to kill a leopard preying on them. The next day, the main ape character, Moon Watcher, uses a club to kill the leader of a rival tribe. The book suggests that the monolith was instrumental in awakening intelligence. In AD 1999, Dr. Haywood Floyd travels to the Moon's Clavius base, where a scientist explains that they have found a magnetic disturbance, designated Tycho Magnetic Anomaly 1 or TMA1, in the crater Tycho. Excavation has revealed a large black slab, precisely fashioned to a ratio of 1, 4 to 9, or 12 hours 22 minutes and 32 seconds and therefore believed the work of intelligence. Visiting TMA-1, Floyd and others arrive just as sunlight falls upon it for the first time since it was uncovered, it emits a piercing radio transmission which the scientists determine is directed at one of the moons of Saturn, Japetus a mission, Discovery-1, is dispatched to Saturn. En route, Dr. David Bowman and Dr. Frank Poole are the only conscious humans aboard, their three colleagues are in suspended animation, to be awakened near Saturn. The HAL 9000, an artificially intelligent computer, addressed as, HAL, maintains the ship. While Poole is receiving a birthday message from his family on Earth, HAL tells Bowman that the Air 35 communication unit of the ship is going to malfunction. Poole takes one of the extravehicular pods and swaps the Air 35 unit, but when Bowman conducts tests on the removed Air 35 unit, he determines that there was never anything wrong with it. Poole and Bowman become suspicious at Hal's refusal to admit that his diagnosis was mistaken. Hal then claims that the replacement Air 35 unit will fail. In communicating with Earth, Poole and Bowman are directed to disconnect Hal for analysis. These instructions are interrupted as the signal is broken, and HAL informs them that the Air 35 unit has malfunctioned. As Poole is removing the unit he is killed when his pod accelerates into him, crushing him. Bowman, uncertain of HAL's role therein, decides to wake the other three astronauts, and therefore quarrels with HAL, with HAL refusing to obey his orders. Bowman threatens to disconnect him if his orders are not obeyed, and HAL relents. As Bowman begins to awaken his colleagues, he hears HAL open both airlocks into space, releasing the ship's internal atmosphere. From a sealed emergency shelter, Bowman gains a spacesuit and re-enters the ship, where he shuts down HAL's consciousness, leaving intact only his autonomic functions, and manually re-establishes contact with Earth. He then learns that his mission is to explore Iapetus, in the hope of contacting the society that buried the monolith on the moon. 
Bowman learns that Hal had begun to feel guilty at keeping the purpose of the mission from him and Poole, against his stated mission of gathering information and reporting it fully, and when threatened with disconnection, he panicked and defended himself out of a belief that his very existence was at stake, having no concept of sleep. Bowman spends months on the ship alone, slowly approaching Iapetus. During his approach, he gradually notices a small black spot on the surface of Iapetus, and later finds it identical in shape to TMA-1, only much larger. The scientists on Earth name this monolith, TMA-2, which Bowman identifies as a double misnomer because it is not in the Tycho crater and gives off no magnetic anomaly. When Bowman approaches the monolith, it opens and pulls in Bowman's pod. Before he vanishes, Mission Control hears him proclaim, "...the thing's hollow—it goes on forever—and—oh my God—it's full of stars." Bowman is transported via the monolith to an unknown star system, through a large interstellar switching station, and sees other species spaceships going on other routes. Bowman is given a wide variety of sites, from the wreckage of ancient civilizations to what appear to be life forms, living on the surfaces of a binary star system's planet. He is brought to what appears a pleasant hotel suite, carefully designed to make him feel at ease, and falls asleep, whereupon he becomes an immortal star child that can live and travel in space. The star child then returns to Earth, where he detonates an orbiting nuclear warhead. This is not discussed again until the sequel to the book, 2010, Odyssey 2. Themes Perils of Technology 2001, A Space Odyssey explores technological advancement, its promise and its danger. The HAL 9000 computer puts forward the troubles that can crop up when man builds machines, the inner workings of which he does not fully comprehend and therefore cannot fully control. Perils of Nuclear War The book explores the perils related to the Atomic Age. In this novel, the Cold War is apparently still on, and at the end of the book one side has nuclear weapons above the Earth on an orbital platform. To test its abilities, the Star Child detonates an orbiting warhead at the end of the novel, creating a false dawn below for the people on Earth. Roger Ebert notes that Kubrick originally intended for the first spaceship seen in the film to be an orbiting bomb platform, but in the end he decided to leave the ship's meaning more ambiguous. Clark, however, retained and clearly stated this fact in the novel. Evolution The novel takes a panoramic overview of progress, human and otherwise. The story follows the growth of human civilization from primitive man ape. Distinctively, Space Odyssey is concerned about not only the evolution that has led to the development of humanity, but also the evolution that humanity might undergo in the future. Hence, we follow Bowman as he is turned into a star child. The novel acknowledges that evolutionary theory entails that humanity is not the end, but only a step in the process. One way this process might continue, the book imagines, is that humans will learn to move to robot bodies and eventually rid themselves of a physical form altogether. Space exploration When 2001, A Space Odyssey was written, mankind had not yet set foot on the moon. The space exploration programs in the United States and the Soviet Union were only in the early stages. Much room was left to imagine the future of the space program. Space Odyssey offers one such vision, offering a glimpse at what space exploration might one day become. Lengthy journeys, such as manned flights to Saturn, and advanced technologies, such as suspended animation, are described in the novel. Artificial Intelligence The book raises questions about consciousness, sentience, and human interactions with machines. Hal's helpful disposition contrasts with his malevolent behavior. Through much of the movie he seems to have malfunctioned. At the end of the novel we learn that Hal's odd behavior stems from an improper conflict in his orders. 
Having been instructed not to reveal the nature of the mission to his crew, he reasons that their presence is a threat to the mission, which is his prime concern. Hal's reversion to a childlike state as Dave shuts him down mirrors aspects of human death, and his expressed fear of being shut down causes Dave to hesitate. Accoutrements of space travel the novel is deliberately written so as to give the reader an almost kinesthetic familiarity with the experience of space travel and the technologies encountered. Large sections of the novel are devoted to detailed descriptions of these. The novel discusses orbital mechanics and the maneuvers associated with space travel with great scientific accuracy. The daily lives of Bowman and Poole on board the Discovery One are discussed in detail and give the impression of a busy yet mundane lifestyle with few surprises until the malfunction of HAL. Dr. Floyd's journey to Space Station One is depicted with awareness of fine points such as the experience of a space shuttle launch, the adhesive sources used to keep food firmly in place on one's plate, and even the zero-gravity toilet. Characters Main characters Moon Watcher, a man-ape who lived in dry equatorial Africa, circa 3 million BC. He, his tribe, and his species were faced with extinction, but for the intervention of a monolith which imbued him and his fellows with the beginnings of higher intelligence. Evolution then took its course. Dr. Haywood Floyd, scientist and senior bureaucrat, who is flown from the Earth to the Moon on a secret mission concerning the Tycho monolith, a second monolith which has been discovered on the Moon, and excavated by Americans. In Floyd's presence, the Tycho monolith, being struck by sunlight for the first time in three million years, sends an extremely powerful signal in the direction of Saturn. David Bowman, first captain of the Discovery, an American spacecraft which had previously been intended to visit the Jupiter system, but which has recently instead been charged with exploring Saturn. Unbeknownst to Bowman and his deputy Frank Poole, the true objective of the mission is reconnaissance of Saturn space, implicated by the above radio signal direction, where it is thought that further clues to the alien's intent may be found. Frank Poole, Bowman's deputy. Bowman and Poole routinely toggle shifts in order to maintain a continuous, waking presence on board the Discovery. Poole is attacked and seemingly killed by HAL while performing EVA maintenance. HAL 9000, the Discovery's intelligent, on-board ship's computer, capable of monitoring all ship functions, and holding conversations and maintaining relationships with human beings. HAL malfunctions, killing all crew members with the exception of Bowman. This was a result both of HAL being entrusted with the true objective of the Discovery's mission, and also a being charged with keeping it a secret until the appropriate time. These orders conflict with HAL's basic purpose, which is the accurate and complete communication of information to humans. Minor characters Over the course of the novel, several minor characters either appear very briefly or are named only in passing, including other man-apes, spaceflight staff, lunar station security, and Discovery crew members. Among the novel's minor characters, some of the more consequential are listed below often having direct film equivalents, or else being recurring characters in the Odyssey novel series. Dr. Dmitry Moisevich, a good friend of Floyd's and citizen of the rival USSR, who diplomatically presses Floyd about the Americans' outbreak. Cover story intended to keep outsiders away from the discovery of the Tycho monolith while both are aboard Space Station One, a stopping point between the Earth and the Moon. In the film, Moisevich's role is carried out by a character of a different name, while the character of Moisevich as such makes appearances throughout the rest of the Odyssey series and in the opening scene of the 2010 film. Moisevich, like Floyd, is written as a cagey and worldly bureaucrat. 
Ralph Halverson, administrator of the Southern Province and leader of Clavius Base. Halverson represents American interests on the Moon, and receives Floyd at Clavius to gather information about the Tycho monolith. Whitehead, Kaminsky, and Hunter, a trio of astronauts who are put aboard the Discovery in hibernation, in order to conserve resources. In the event of the deaths of Bowman or Poole, the hibernating astronauts are to be revived in the order given. Consequently, upon Poole's presumptive death, Bowman partially revived Whitehead until HAL depressurized the Discovery, killing the three while Bowman escaped to a secure area. In the film, HAL kills the trio by simply shutting off their life support functions while Bowman is on Eva in an effort to recover Poole's body. In the film, the trio are instead styled as Kimball, Kaminsky, and Hunter. Dr. Chandra, briefly cited by HAL during his deactivation as being his first instructor, who taught him to sing, Daisy. In the film, this initial instructor is instead named as Mr. Langley. However, the character of Dr. Chandra features throughout the rest of the Odyssey franchise, especially in the 2010 book and film. Anna, Betty, Clara, the namesakes of the Discovery's three Eva pods. In other films and novels of the franchise, these pods are given different naming conventions. Betty is the pod which, under Hal's control, causes Paul's presumptive death. Topic. Sequels A sequel to the book, entitled 2010, Odyssey 2, was published in 1982 and adapted as a motion picture in 1984. Clark went on to write two more sequel novels, 2061, Odyssey 3 and 3001, The Final Odyssey to date, the last two novels have yet to be adapted as films. Topic Reception. James Blish commented that while Clark's narrative provided essential elements of the story that Kubrick ignored or glossed over, the novel has very little of the poetry of the picture, and lacks most of the picture's strengths", but that, "...it has to be read before one can understand the picture." Elliot Fremont Smith reviewed the book positively in The New York Times, stating that it was, "...a fantasy by a master who is as deft at generating accelerating, almost painful suspense as he is knowledgeable and accurate and fascinating about the technical and human details of space flight and exploration." Topic. Differences from the film Although the novel and film were developed simultaneously, the novel follows early drafts of the film, from which the final version of the film deviated. These changes were often for practical reasons relating to what could be filmed economically, and a few were due to differences of opinion between Kubrick and Clark. The most notable differences are a change in the destination planet from Saturn to Jupiter, and the nature of the sequence of events leading to Hal's demise. Stylistic differences may be more important than content differences. Of lesser importance are the appearance of the monolith, the age of HAL, and the novel giving names to various spacecraft, prehistoric apes, and Hal's inventor. Stylistically, the novel generally fleshes out and makes concrete many events left somewhat enigmatic in the film, as has been noted by many observers. Vincent Libretto has noted that the novel has "...strong narrative structure," which fleshes out the story, while the film is a mainly visual experience where much remains "...symbolic." Randy Rasmussen has noted that the personality of Haywood Floyd is different. In Clark's novel, he finds space travel thrilling, acting almost as a spokesman for Clark, whereas in the film, he experiences space travel as routine and tedious. In the film, Discovery's mission is to Jupiter, not Saturn. 
Kubrick used Jupiter because he and special effects supervisor Douglas Trumbull could not decide on what they considered to be a convincing model of Saturn's rings for the film. Clark went on to replace Saturn with Jupiter in the novel's sequel 2010, Odyssey 2. Trumbull later developed a more convincing image of Saturn for his own directorial debut Silent Running. The general sequence of the showdown with HAL is different in the film from in the book. Hal's initial assertion that the Air 35 unit will fail comes in the film after an extended conversation with David Bowman about the odd and melodramatic mysteries and secrecy surrounding the mission, motivated officially because HAL is required to draw up and send to Earth a crew psychology report. In the novel it is during the birthday message to Frank Poole. In the film, Bowman and Poole decide on their own to disconnect HAL in context of a plan to restore the allegedly failing antenna unit. If it does not fail, HAL will be shown to be malfunctioning. HAL discovers the plan by reading their lips through the EVA pod window. In Clark's novel, Ground Control orders Bowman and Poole to disconnect HAL, should he prove to be malfunctioning a second time by predicting that the second unit is going to go bad. However, in Clark's novel, after Poole's death, Bowman tries waking up the other crew members, whereupon HAL opens both the internal and external airlock doors, suffocating these three and almost killing Bowman. The film has Bowman, after Poole's murder, go out to rescue him. HAL denies him re-entry and kills the hibernating crew members by turning off their life support. In the sequel 2010, Odyssey 2, however, the recounting of the Discovery 1 mission is changed to the film version. The film is generally far more enigmatic about the reason for HAL's failure, while the novel spells out that HAL is caught up in an internal conflict because he is ordered to lie about the purpose of the mission, because of what photographed well, the appearance of the monolith that guided Moon Watcher and the other man apes at the beginning of the story was changed from novel to film. In the novel, this monolith is a transparent crystal, in the film, it is solid black. The TMA-1 and TMA-2 monoliths were unchanged. While it is stated in the book that the ratio of the dimensions of the monolith are supposed to be 1, 4 to 9, or the first three integral numbers squared, the shape of the actual monolith seen in the movie does not conform to this ratio. A ratio of 1, 4 to 9 would produce an object that appears thick, wide, and squat. Kubrick wanted something taller and thinner, which he felt would be more imposing. Measurements taken from movie frames show that the movie monolith has dimensions approximately in the ratio 0.65, 4 to 9 or 1, 6 14. In the book, HAL became operational on 12 January 1997, but in the movie the year is given as 1992. It has been thought that Kubrick wanted HAL to be the same age as a young bright child, nine years old, the famous quote that opens the film sequel 2010, the year we make contact. My God! It's full of stars! is actually not in the 2001 film, although it is in the 2001 book. Iapetus <laughs> vs. Japetus The name of the Saturnian moon Iapetus is spelled Japetus in the book. This is an alternative rendering of the name, which derives from the fact that consonantal I often stands for J in the Latin language. See modern spelling of Latin. In his exhaustive book on the film, The Making of Kubrick's 2001, author Jerome Agel discusses the point that Iapetus is the most common rendering of the name, according to many sources, including the Oxford English Dictionary. He goes on to say that, Clark, the perfectionist, spells it Japetus. Agel then cites the dictionary that defines Jap as, to jest, to joke, to mock or make fun of. He then asks the reader, "'Is Clark trying to tell us something?' 
Clark himself directly addressed the spelling issue in Chapter 19 of The Lost Worlds of 2001, explaining that he simply and unconsciously used the spelling he was familiar with from The Conquest of Space 1949 by Willie Lay and Chesley Bonestell, presuming that the J form is the German rendering of the Greek. Topic: Release details. 1968, USA, New American Library, ISBN 0-453-00269-2, June 1968, hardback, first edition. 1968, USA, Signet, July 1968, paperback, first paperback edition. 1968, UK, Hutchinson, ISBN 0-09-089830-3, 1968, Hardback, First British Edition. 1968, UK, Arrow Books, ISBN 0-09-001530-4, October 1968, Paperback. 1976, Arrow Books, ISBN 9780099066101, August 1976, Paperback 1982, Rock, ISBN 9780451118646, November 1982, Paperback 1985, Edisiones Orbis, Heisperica, ISBN 9788476340530, paperback, Spanish language edition, 2001, Una Odyssey Espacial, translated by Antonio Ribera. 1990, Orbit, ISBN 9781857236644, July 1990, Paperback 1993, USA, Rock, ISBN 0-451-45273-9, August 1993, Hardback, 25th Anniversary Edition 1993, USA, Turtleback Books, ISBN 9780760187, August 1993, Hardback 1998, Ethaki Yayanlari, ISBN 9789756902011, October 1998, paperback, Turkish language edition, 2001, Ver Yusayef Sanesi, translated by Arden Tazunsoy. 1999, USA, New American Library, ISBN 9780451198495, October 1999, Hardback 2000, USA, ROC, ISBN 9780451457998, September 2000, Paperback 2000, UK, Orbit, ISBN 1-84149-0555, December 2000, Hardback, Special Edition 2001, Rock, Asin B01A6E8EQ6, September 2001, Kindle Edition 2004, Almust Albert Aldith Laltibi Warnsha Wartsi January 2004, Arabic language edition, Odisha Alfta translated by Armd Kaltuvik 2005, USA, Signet ISBN 0-451-45273-9, July 2005, paperback 2008, Visa Vis, ETUDA, ISBN 9788389640949, 2008, Polish language edition, 2001, Odyssey Kosmizna, translated by Jedrzej Polak. 
2008, Brilliance Audio ISBN 9781423365 1624, January 2008 Audiobook narrated by Dick Hill 2008, Nord, ISBN 9788842915508, January 2008, Paperback, Italian Language Edition, 2001, Odyssey Nello Spazio 2008, Jai Lu, ISBN 9782290308141, March 2008, Paperback, French Language Edition, 2001, L'Odyssée de l'Espace 2010, Editor and Amira, ISBN 9 trillion 786 billion 68 million 134,604, Hardcover, Romanian Language Edition, 2001, Odyssea Spatiala 2010, Orbit Asin BOO3 PPDIC4, June 2010, Kindle Edition 2012 Rosetta Books, Asin Booana 27IU, 2012, Kindle Edition 2013, BR, Aleph, ISBN 9788576571551, October 2013, Brazilian Portuguese Language Edition, 2001, Uma Odisseia no Especo, translated by Fabio Fernandes. 2016, Penguin Galaxy, ISBN 9780143119000, Tribute to the Dragon, ISBN 9786053755951, October 2016, Paperback, Turkish Language Edition, 2001, Böyüze Destani, translated by Uya E. Sirith Film 2010 was released in 1984 resulting in movie tie-in editions of both the 2001 and 2010 novels. At the time Signet Books reported that over 2.8 million copies of 2001 were in print and that 2010 was one of 1983's top sellers with 300,000 hardcover copies and 1.75 million first paperback editions printed. Topic. See also List of fictional computers Toynbee Tiles Childhood's End List of stories set in a future now past